today we're going to address ride height. So we've got a combination of things we're gonna do for the suspension. That's going to include a Metal Cloak three and a half inch game changer kit and some Fox 2.5 Elite shocks. So let's get this thing torn apart. Okay, what we've done here, we have uh, gone ahead and replaced the control arms and installed the shocks and the rear track bar. And what we did was mock this up at ride height. So we know that uh, Metal Cloak typically does three and a half in the front and two in the rear on this game changer kit. So we've gone two inches over stock on the ride height to get the axle centered and get the track bar adjusted. Now we do still have loose jam nuts on all of these. And then we also went with their instructions on the lengths of the upper and lower control arms. Now we've got the tires and wheels bolted up and basically just dry cycling the suspension on the lift. And you can see right here that both tires move freely. And then we're looking at clearances up here. We know that uh, the inner fender is probably gonna take up a little bit of that room and then our bump stop here, we've got about three inches between here and the metal cup, which is traditionally what we would do. And then right here, we're gonna lose a little bit of shock travel. So this is right at one inch of shock travel that we're gonna have to limit. So what we may do is go back whenever we put the new axle under here, cause it's only about a month out, maybe, maybe two months out. So we're not gonna modify this axle because we're gonna sell it. Uh, but what we may do is when we put the new axle in here, cut these shock mounts off and move them up a little higher. Uh, that way it'll have a little more down travel and we'll use all of the shock travel that we have. So we've checked this out. We've got plenty of clearance all the way around the tire, but that's without the inner fender in here. And then we've got some clearance here between the shock and the side of the frame. And once we get our wheel spacers on here. That'll give us a little more room because we went with a real uh, positive offsets of a grade two wheel. So that one is going to be such that it has, I think 5.75 inch backspace. So we're gonna put some Synergy wheel spacers on there to give it a little more stance, but to keep these wheels because we really like the way those look. Okay, so most of the suspension in the rear is set up now. Uh, note that right here, we're leaving this rear sway bar off right now because what we've done is, although this is a game changer kit, we went with a longer travel shock. So that shock needed a little bit of a spacer here under the spring and also this spring retainer because we actually wanted, we didn't want this thing to sit perfectly level because we do haul some things with it. So we put this TerraFlex half inch uh, rear spacer in here as well as the TerraFlex spring retainer kit. And I don't know if you can see up in there, let me get in there, in the very top, that is the TerraFlex spring retainer. And it goes up on top of the spring as well. You can see it up in there. But uh, what we've got now is the sway bar links are too short. So we've uh, picked up the Artec brackets to do the DIY or build your own anti-rock. So we've got all those components on the way. So we're just going to run around now with, without a sway bar for a few days. But uh, you can see here the track bars in, the brake lines are on. And what we've done, we removed the ABS wire from that retainer here and we've secured it to the uh, brake hoses and then we had to slide the hose um, off of its clip that was up here and then that's just kind of loosely hanging but it's not going to get damaged or anything there and there's the original sway bar bolts we just threw those in there so we wouldn't lose them but uh, all the jam nuts are tight all the rear suspension is tight and finished and done and those wheel spacers are on so we are ready to move up front now.
All right, so now the outboard shock brackets are on. There's a 3 8 bolt down in here that goes up in there, and then you've got a long bolt with a sleeve, a crush sleeve that goes through there. We're gonna reuse our factory bolt because some of the other hardware didn't wasn't compatible with the shock eye. And we did reuse this 10 millimeter. Normally what we do is drill this out. I'm kind of crunched for time here today. So I'm gonna go back and fix that later, but right now we've got that uh, M6 10 millimeter head bolt in there. And you can see here, we've got four inches of bump stop fully crushed. And we have clearance here on the fender. We're gonna have to check the caster and, and see what all it has. But right now we have just enough tire clearance to clear the inner fender and the rock rail. And then over here on this side, we are going to have to limit our steering travel. Really, honestly, this size tire or a 42, you need to get like wide axles, big axles, but we're gonna have a problem here, right there, with contact the tire tread on the reservoir here. So we're gonna have to either remount the reservoirs somewhere else, or what we're gonna do is get some steering stop limitations here, uh, maybe right here to prevent the steering from steering all the way. Um, it might be better to remount the reservoirs. That way you still have all your turning radius. These things are long and uh, they need as much help as they can get. All right, so on these sliders here, these are the factory Rubicon sliders. What we've done here is they used to come out a little bit well, even with this edge, or maybe a little bit past it. So what I did was cut them off, capped them back, and I'll show you that. So let's hop over here to where we have the other one. And as you can see here, this is what we cut off. That's roughly, I don't know, four inches. And then you have to redrill this hole. I believe that's uh, 2564. But anyway, took that off, cleaned up the edge to where that little cap fits back on there snugly. And that's this little guy right here. And when it goes back on, it'll push in there. And then this push pin goes in through this new hole and holds it in place right there. So anyway, we've got uh, both of those are trimmed. The driver's side is put back on and we're working on the passenger side now. So we'll get some paint on this thing and get it back on. In case you were wondering, here's what we use on most everything. It's a 620-1433 flat black uh, MRO 4-in-1. It uh, does a really good job of covering. And uh, matches most everything that's that factory texture black. So kind of a satin flat finish, but with a little bit of texture. Um, that and then the other one is rust-oleum texture works well as is at the same time so either one but uh that one's ready to to go back on so i know that's still wet but that's not a problem we'll just pop this cap back on and then this push pin goes right in there and holds that cap on so once that dries, it'll kind of blend in, but let's go ahead and get this put back on the truck. All right, a few other things to note on the lift kit are these items here. So these are the factory upper isolators. Those on the metal cloak get, get replaced with an isolator specific to their coil springs. 
And then we did the metal cloak lower coil seats, which there's nothing wrong with this one, but if you can see this one, see how those are laid over. So these things were folded over and they've gotten some shape back in them, but we went ahead and, and got rid of those all together. And then these are the brake line retainers that go on the front lower control arms. What we do is we take a, a cutoff wheel and just kind of slice it, but gotta be very careful that you don't go all the way through and damage the brake hose, but you slice it like that and then grab it with some pliers and fold it out. And then you can remove the, the brake hose out of that. So we're gonna keep these in case we have a customer that needs them. These right here get trashed as well as these brackets. Now that we have 40 inch tires on the Gladiator here, we are modifying the tire carrier to accommodate the new spare. And the new spare it is a, an older pro comp that we just have that's uh, in okay shape to be enough for a spare. But we've test fit this in a multiple, there are different locations. That measurement, you can go off of that. But what I did was I just put one of these studs in here and moved it up and down until we got it where we wanted it. So now we are putting that together for the last time. These uh, carriage bolts go through from the front side there. Now we have our spare tire in the truck and we went from 50% useless rear window to 100% useless rear window. So tickled about that. Now we don't have to look at anything in the rear view mirror other than a big fat tire. So let's move on to that next upgrade. All right, so the front drive shaft in the truck would not work with this amount of lift. Um, so what we've done, we've taken the drive shaft off and then now we need to remove this one and a quarter nut from the yoke. Here is the old yoke or flange off the transfer case and it's got an o-ring in here so pull that out and you can see in the bottom here there's a machine surface uh, recess for that o-ring to fit in there now our new yoke does not have that so some of these do and some of these don't i'm not sure why some do and some don't but if you have that same recessed machined area you can transfer over the o-ring but in our case we don't have that so what we need to do is apply some RTV to these splines and then we can install the new yoke. Front drive shaft is in. So on the back side there are 5 16 12 point bolts to attach the drive shaft to that yoke. And then up front it reuses those factory 15 millimeter head bolts. And all we need to do now is pump a little grease in this fitting here. <laughs> 